to visualize ovaries on ultrasound. In general, you can use either sagittal or transverse view to identify the ovaries which are usually located lateral and or posterior to the uterus. If you have trouble viewing the ovary, try directing the endocavitary probe more posteriorly. An ovary can be identified on transvaginal ultrasound by these characteristics. First of all, it is posterior and lateral to the uterus. It typically measures 2 to 3 cm in diameter. It is less echogenic than surrounding tissue. It is more static compared to the surrounding bowel. And it is an anechoic follicular structure. Use the full urinary bladder as an acoustic window to angle across the ovary. Axial transabdominal ultrasound image with the ovary lateral to the uterus. In case of the axial transvaginal scan, reposition the probe into the fornix to angle towards the agnexa. Here you can see ultrasound of normal transvaginal ovary demonstration with the normal peripheral follicles. Ultrasound of the uterus may be oblique and squash the ovary giving it flattened ovoid shape. The postmenopausal ovary can be difficult to identify because of the absence of follicles and reduced size. The pediatric ovary will have multiple small follicles. Here we have small ovarian cyst which is usually a large follicle that has continued to grow after an egg has been released. Simple cysts are the most common cysts to occur before the menopause and most disappear within few months. The complex ovarian cyst contains certain features like presence of septation, solid components, increased blood flow, papillary projections and the presence of ascites. While talking about the ultrasound of the ovaries, it's important to mention the iota group ultrasound rule to classify masses as benign B rule or malignant M rules. The features of B rule include unilocular cysts, presence of the solid components where the largest solid component is less than 7 mm, presence of acoustic shadowing, smooth multilocular tumor with the largest diameter of less than 100 mm, and the no blood flow. The features of M rule include irregular solid tumor, ascites, at least four papillary structures, irregular multilocular solid tumor with the largest diameter of more than 100 mm and very strong blood flow. Now what is the best way to estimate the risk of malignancy? An estimation of the risk of malignancy is essential in assessment of ovarian mass. At present, the risk of malignancy index is the most widely used model but recent studies have shown a specific model of the ultrasound parameters, the ultrasound rules derived from International Ovarian Tumor Analysis or IOTA group to have increased sensitivity and specificity. The simple rules have recently been externally validated in 1983, women from 19 ultrasound centers in 8 countries. Here you can see the difference between the cyst and follicles when we visualize any sort of cyst in the ovary. In postmenopausal women, when we have 10 mm or more than that, it is referred to as cyst. When it is 30 mm or more, it is cyst in premenopausal women. But if the size of that simple mass is 2 to 9 mm, that is more likely antral follicle and if it is more than 10 mm, that is graphene follicle. Let us talk about few features and management plan of ovarian cysts in adolescents. Adolescent girls are those with the age group of 10 to 19 years. This is the whole algorithm showing the management plan. I'm not going to go in the detail of that. In case of ovarian cyst in premenopausal women, we follow this algorithm from talk article in case of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women we follow the rcg guideline and this algorithm is followed in case of ovarian cyst in pregnancy the talk article about ovarian cyst in pregnancy is followed here the calculation of rmi has been explained and the simple formula is u multiply by m multiply by ca 125 here we have five ultrasound parameters to classify the ovarian cyst. So that was a little bit about ultrasound of the ovaries and some features of the cysts. 
सब्सक्राइब ऑन ऑप्स एंड गाइनी एंड फॉलो द फेसबुक पेज ऑफ ऑन ऑप्स एंड गाइनी